Hello and welcome to the Teenager Sunday School class. Today's topic we'll be talking about keep yourself pure. Keep yourself pure. Our memory verse is taken from the book of Proverbs chapter. Our memory verse is taken from the book of 1 John actually. 1 John chapter 5 verse 18. 1 John chapter 5 verse 18. And it says, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. A text is taken from the book of Proverbs chapter 5 verse 1 to 23, Proverbs chapter 5 verse 1 to 23, and Psalms chapter 119, 9 to 11. Psalms chapter 119, 9 to to 11. Again, do not forget our memory verse is taken from the book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 18. If today is your first time joining the stream, you are welcome in Jesus name. My name is Timmy Dr. David and click that follow or subscribe button and as you do so, may the Lord bless you in Jesus name. Our relevant word for the teenage class is impurity. Whether you're a teenager or an adult, this is actually very befitting to listen. And we have three outlines for our class today. And the first is avoid becoming a victim of impurity. Avoid becoming a victim of impurity. The second is aim for victory over impurity. Aim for victory over impurity and acquire the virtue of purity. Acquire the virtue of purity. Before I carry on, I would like to read from the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 9 to 11. And I'll be reading it from the New Living Translation. And it says, how can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. And if we look at our second text, which is taken from the book of Proverbs chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1 to 23. We would be making references to that as we go. And it says, my son, I'm going to read just a couple of verses. And the first verse says, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to my wise counsel. Then you will show discernment and your lips will express what you have learned. For the lips of an immoral woman are as sweet as honey and a mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is as bitter as poison as dangerous as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lead straight to grave. For she cares nothing about the path of life. She staggers down a crooked trail and doesn't realize it. So now, my son, listen to me. Never stray from what I am about to say to you. Stay away from her. Don't go near the door of her house. If you do, you will lose your honor and you will lose to merciless people all you have achieved. Strangers will come, with, will consume your wealth and someone else will enjoy the fruit of your labor. In the end, you will groan in anguish when diseases, when diseases consume your body. You will say, how I hated discipline. If only I had ignored all the warnings. Oh, why doesn't I listen to my teachers? Why didn't I pay attention to my instructors? I have come to the brink of utter ruin and now I must face public disgrace. Drink water from your own well. Share your love with only your wife. Why spill the water of your spring in the street? having sex with just anyone. You should reserve it for yourself. Never share it with strangers. Let your wife be a fountain 
of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She is a loving dear, a graceful doe. Let her breast satisfy you always. May you always be captivated by her love. Why be capt captivated, my son, by an immoral woman or fondle the breast of a promiscuous woman? For the Lord sees clearly, clearly what a man does, examining every path he takes, he takes. An evil man is held captive by his own sin. They are rope that catch and hold him. He will die for lack of self-control. He will be lost because of his great foolishness. When someone, when something is said to be pure, it means it's, it's still in its original state or it's, you know, it's added nothing. Nothing is added to it. For example, the water is pure if you do not pour um, a drink in it or a juice in it. Um, or if perhaps it has gone through a lot of seafood and a lot of processing for it to be considered pure. And once it is in that state, it is considered pure and nothing else is in it. So therefore, it is safe to drink without dirt and without contamination. On the other hand, when something is described as in, as impure, it means that that thing is contaminated or inferior. For instance, impure water is water that is dirty, polluted, unsafe, and on unable to transmit diseases like cholera to anyone who drinks it. We shall consider purity that relates with personal moral character in this Sunday school. The Bible instructs us to keep ourselves pure in every way. We shall also consider four aspects of our immoral purity, uh, purity, which is spiritual purity, according to John chapter one, verse five to verse five, chapter five, verse twenty one and social purity according to James chapter 1 verse 27 sensual purity according to Philipp Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 and sexual purity according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 to 20 you know following the key points the the following key points are actually useful to keeping yourself pure First is to avoid becoming a victim of impurity, to escape the danger of various moral impurities. You must do some certain things. One of the things you, you should do is to forsake worldly friends and their advices. What, what, what you forsake worldly friends and their advice. According to, you know, Second Samuel, if you have your Bible, you might want to pause here and read it. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse um, 13. So let's quickly look at Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 2. Chapter 13, I beg your pardon. Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 3 to 5. It says, but Ammon had a very crafty friend, his cousin Jonadab. He was the son of David's brother, Shemir. One day, Jonadab said to Ammon, what's the, what's the trouble? Why should the son of a king look so dejected, look so dejected morning after morning? And verse 5 says, Well, Jonadab said, I, I'll tell you what to do. Go back to bed and pretend you're here when your father comes to see you. Ask him to let Tama come and prepare some food for you. Tell him you'll feel better if she prepares it as you watch and fe and feeds you with her own hand. Here is a is a is a is a story of um the son of of David who had um somebody who counselled him or who advised him in a very wrong manner and which resulted into you know ripple effect of sin and you know, back to back, um, uh, bad outcomes. And that action was only possible. It was only able to do that because somebody was speaking the wrong thing to him. So we advise to do what? 
to stay away from worldly friends and their advices. If it's not according or in line to the scripture, whatever advice you get, if it's not in line to the scripture, you should not do it. And if you do not get a conviction in your heart, I think you should just drop it. As long as the Lord is, is not the word of the Lord for you, it's not something you might want to consider. Again, you want to forbid close contact with the opposite sex in private places. Even if you're even if they are your relation, don't visit anyone or stay indoor alone with a person of the opposite sex. Another thing you can do is even if they are close relative, even if they are close relative, according to you know Second Samuel chapter 13, 7 to 14, it shows us what happened after you know Tamar came Tamar came to to her brother and because of the counsel of Jonadab she was raped and again it wasn't that yes although he was sick of his love but if she wasn't put in that situation if that situation hasn't happened whatever happened could have been avoided you know also forbid any sinful suggestion by a, any sinful su suggestion by anybody or abnormal touch from your like gender as well sometimes we focus on just the opposite sex even those that are not opposite sex sex we should avoid certain touch or gesture um from them so you can read Romans chapter 1, verse 26 to 27, Romans 1, 26 to 27, and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Another thing you would uh, you should do is filter what comes in your mind from the internet and offline. You know, sometimes we do, yes, the, the, there's that fear of, oh, um, the internet is a very bad place and it can actually corrupt. Yes, the internet has, is good and is bad. As well as that's not the only place, you know, our mind can be infiltrated with bad thoughts or um, can be molded. Even the things that we listen to um, either on the things that we read or the things that we hear from our friends, you know, offline, not clicking a dirty picture or videos, audios, ebooks, pornographic website. We should do away with that. Most importantly, fill your heart and mind with pure and healthy information. Fill your mind and heart with pure and healthy information alone. According to Psalms chapter um, 119 that we've read earlier on, verse 9 to 11 and Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. The second outline, which is the aim, we should always aim for our victory over impurity we should aim aim for your victory over impurity some people are unfortunate to have been polluted by some form of moral impurity but guess what the blood of jesus is available to cleanse you and heal you of any damage these sins are caused in your life the bible says and the time of this ignorance God has overlooked, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent, according to First Peter chapter 13 to 16. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13 to 16. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13 to 16. So all you need to do is to decide to stop all activities that pollute your mind and body. It's not over for you. Aim to overcome any form or of sin, of impurity you might be struggling with and ask God to help you. Romans chapter 5 verse 20. Romans chapter 5 verse 20. And you will surely overcome. You know, and I think this scripture is also speaking to not just you, it's also speaking to myself. Over the week I have been struggling to actually make a decision. And because God has called me into something and I'm just like, God, 
how is it that you want me to go about it? And when I prayed for grace, God did release grace. Yes, I did struggle. It was a struggle, but I had people who had, you know, the spirit of God in them and they were able to counsel me and help me take that decision. They were help. They actually held my hand to go through that decision, to be able to, to go through the process, to be able to successfully make that decision. And at the end of it, I was so glad that I was able to do, do so. And the third outline is acquire the virtue of purity, acquire the virtue of purity. Your spiritual purity will be assured if you are, if you feed only on the word of God and pray regularly, feeding on the word of God and pray regularly. Let's quickly look at first Peter, first Peter chapter two, first Peter chapter two verse 2 and it says i'll be reading from the new living translation it says many will follow their evil teachings and shameful immoralities and because of this teacher the way of truth will be slandered and then if we look at james oh that was actually second peter i actually supposed to read first peter first peter chapter 2 verse 2 it says like newborn babes you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. And the more we read the scripture, the more we fill our heart with things that are pure. And the more we become pure and keep our purity on to God. You know, one of the things you can do is... Um, your social purity will be assured if you fellowship together with the children of God. If you're in school, you want to look out and search out for um, a, a fellowship that we have people who have given their, surrendered their life to Christ, you know. But do not be deceived. There's so many places that you can go to and you're not connected or you're fed in the spirit. But if you pray about it before you join any fellowship, I'm sure the spirit of the Lord will lead you to the right place. Yeah. Um, it's important that you fellowship regularly with the children of God, people of like mind. Be sanctu your sensual purity will be assured if your sensual purity will be assured if you follow the righteous lifestyle of those that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Those that call on the Lord out of a of, out of a pure heart, and you can quickly look at Job chapter one verse, uh, Job chapter thirty one verse two, and Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty two. Your sexual purity, your sexual purity, will be assured if you flee from lustful, from youthful lust, and every evil appearances. Your sexual purity will be assured if you flee from youthful lust and every appearances of evil. Let's quickly look at um, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 2, verse 22. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. And in conclusion to our, our lesson today, living an immoral and impure life seem more popular in this world than living a morally decent and pure life. Just as folly is common, but wisdom is rare. Impurity endangers the life of a person, whether a child, a teenager, or an adult. And for us to be able to apply this class, this lesson to our lives, we need to live a pure life. You need to discipline, you need to discipline yourself with setting goals on the good habits you want to cultivate and the bad habits you want to drop. According to Job chapter 31 verse 1. 
if we quickly look at Job, Job chapter 31, Job chapter 31, verse 1. And it says, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look with lust at a young woman. And you know what? God's grace will help you even as you make those choices and as you make those as you make effort and begin to make those choices choices to live right choices to to do the will of God choices to be pure and consecrated to God if we look at the the beginning of Samson Samson was consecrated to God but because he began to indulge in the things that the Lord commanded him not to do that actually led to him being held captive. A lot of us are going through a lot of things that has been as a result of our impurity and disobedience. But let me tell you, God is able to bring us to a place where that we are pure and holy and consecrated to him. However, he would not force us. We should take the step to be able to do so. And there's always a reward for it. And as teenagers, as adults, as mommies and daddies and, you know, everyone in between, it is important to live a life and make decisions, decisions that would help us to successfully, successfully live a pure and holy life. And as you do so, I want to pray that the grace of the Lord will be released on you, that you would have that the Lord will release the grace to do the right thing, to take the steps. And he will surround you with people that would help you and encourage you to do the step. Even as you make up your mind to live a life that is pure and holy unto the Lord. We have now come to the end of the class. I'd like you to subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook as well. We are actually also on Instagram. We are sharing certain short reels around our topics. Most importantly, most importantly, it is important that you share this message to someone because I know as it has blessed you, it's going to bless somebody else. And as you do so, that is your own little quarter of evangelism and spreading the word of God to people and calling people into the fold of Christ. My name is Temitokwe David and by the grace of God, I'll see you some other time if God tarries, if Christ tarries. Have a wonderful week and God bless you. Take care. Bye.